Hey achievers, welcome to Ace Academy. So today we'll be looking at the current affairs of February 15 and 16. So without much delay, let's get into the first question. So the first question is, which city hosted the first G20 Environment and Climate Sustainability Working Group meeting in February 23 under India's G20 presidency. So the options are Indore, Madhya Pradesh, Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh, Bangalore, Karnataka, Kolkata, West Bengal, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. So the correct answer is option 3, Bangalore, Karnataka. So now let's look at the explanation. From February, from February 9 to 11, 2023, the first G20 Environment and Climate Change Working Group meeting was held in Bangalore, Karnataka under India's G20 presidency. So it was held by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change under the government of India. So India's presidency plans to convene on the Ocean 20 dialogue to facilitate detailed discussion on important aspects of blue economy. India's presidency also announced a coordinated beach cleaning event to be conducted on May 21st, 2023 on the sidelines of Ocean 20 dialogue. The discussion during this meeting will be taken forward at the second ECHWG which stands for Environment and Climate Sustainability Working Group which is scheduled on 27th to 29th March 23 at Gandhinagar, Gujarat. So now let's look at the next question. So the second question is the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways has recently constituted her high level committee to draft the revised guidelines for the operation of roll on roll of and roll on passenger ferry services the high level committee headed by dash so the options are nandish shukla anil ramthek c hari chandran sanjay k mehta abhishek chaudhary so the correct answer is option 4 sanjay k mehta so now let's look at the explanation So the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways has constituted a high level committee which is being headed by Sanjay K. Mehta who is also known as S.K. Mehta. He is the chairman of Deen Dayal Port Authority uh, which is in Gujarat to draft the revised guidelines for operation of roll on roll off and roll on passenger ferry services. The committee will also simultaneously draft the model concession agreement for roll on roll off and roll on passenger terminal operators and the model license agreement for the operation of these two services and also the fast passenger ferry the aim is to promote and develop the roll on roll off ferry transportation ecosystem this is one of the key initiative and reforms pushed by the ministry under the Sagar Mala program to strengthen India's socio-economic and regularity environment. So now let's move on to the next question. So the third question is, which of the following points is incorrect and uh, with respect to 6th Shanghai Corporation Organization, Supreme Audit Institutes, Leaders meeting held in Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. So the first point is the meeting led by Girish Chandra Murmu, Comptroller and the Auditor General of India under the theme of integrating emerging technologies in audit with focus on artificial intelligence and cyber security. Girish Chandra Murmu signed two MOUs with SAIs of Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan to strengthen cooperation and exchange of expertise in the field of auditing. Under the uh, SEO SAI leaders meeting, Girish Chandra Marmu stressed the need for proper auditing of the country's local bodies as India is aiming to achieve USD 5 trillion economy by 25. So the options are only A, only B, only C, only A and B, only B and C. So the correct answer is option to only B. So now let's look at the explanation. 
So the six Shanghai Corporation Organization's Supreme Audit Institute Leaders Meeting was held in Lucknow in Uttar Pradesh from February 6 to 8, 2023. The discussions were held at the Shanghai Corporation Organization's Supreme Audit Institute's Leaders Meeting held by Girish Chandra Marmu, who is the controller and the auditor general of India. Under the theme of integrating emerging technologies in audit with focus on artificial intelligence and cyber security on the sidelines of SCO SAI leaders meeting on February 13, 2023, Girish Chandra Marmu signed a two memorandum of understanding with SAIs of Kazakhstan and Tajikistan to strengthen cooperation and exchange of expertise in the field of audit. So under the Shanghai Corporation Organization and Supreme Audit Institute leaders meeting, Girish Chandra Marmu stressed the need for proper auditing of the country's local bodies as India is aiming to achieve USD 5 trillion economy by 2025. So now let's move on to the next question. So the fourth question is, the Agriculture and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority observed its Dash APEDA Foundation Day on 13th February 23 across India. So the options are 38th, 25th, 36th, 27th and 37th. So the correct answer is option 5, 37th. So now let's look at the explanation. The Agriculture and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority under the Ministry of Commerce and Trade observed the 37th APEDA Foundation Day on 13 February 23 across India. So APEDA established in 1986. It has achieved phenomenal success in promotion of export of agriculture products in its successful journey of 37 years. For the current fiscal, the target given to APEDA is 23.56 USD till December 2022. 84% uh, that is around 19.69 billion USD has been achieved and the remaining target is expected to be completed within the expected time period. So now let's move on to the next question. So the fifth question is, which of the following points is incorrect with respect to visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Delhi in February 23? So the first point is PM Narendra Modi inaugurated the Uttar Pradesh Global Investor Summit 23 in UP. PM visited Maharashtra and flagged off India's fifth and sixth one day Bharat trains at Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaja terminus in Pune Maharashtra and the third point is PM officially inaugurated the new Aljmetas Safiya Arabic Academy which is widely known as Jamia campus in Marol, Mumbai Maharashtra. PM visited Rajasthan and inaugurated 246 km Delhi Dasha Lassot stretch of Delhi Mumbai Expressway from Dasha in Rajasthan. PM launched a year-long commemoration of Maharishi Dayanan Saraswati 200th birth anniversary at Indira Gandhi Indo Stadium in Delhi. So the correct answer is option 2. PM visited Maharashtra and flagged off India's 5th and 6th one day Bharat trains at Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaja terminus in Pune Maharashtra. So now let's look at the explanation. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra and Rajasthan and Delhi to launch various initiatives in February 23 p.m. Modi inaugurated Uttar Pradesh Global Investor Summit 23 on February 10th, 23 in UP during the event. He also launched Invest UP 2.0 and inaugurated the Global Trade Show. So on February 10, 23, PM visited and flagged off two one day Bharat trains. India's 9th and 10th one day Bharat trains at Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaja terminus in Mumbai, Maharashtra. And the Mumbai Sholapur one day Bharat train will be the India's 9th one day Bharat train. And Mumbai uh, Sai Nagar Shirdi one day Bharat train will be India's 10th one 
टेंथ ऑफ बांदे वाले ट्रेन द पी एम ऑफिशियली इनोग्रेटेड न्यू अलजमे दस सैफिया अरेबिक अकेडमी विच इज विच इज नोन एज जामिया कैंपस मैरोल मुंबई महाराष्ट्र सो नाउ लेट्स मोन टू दी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन So this is still some points left. So the PM visited Rajasthan and inaugurated 246 km Delhi Dasha Lasso stretch of Delhi Mumbai Expressway from Dasha in Rajasthan. And PM launched a year-long commemoration of Maharishi Dayanan Saraswati birth anniversary at Indira Gandhi Indoor Stadium in New Delhi. So now let's move on to the next question. So the sixth question is how many income tax recent how many income tax written forms for assessment year twenty three to twenty four were notified by the Central Board of Direct Taxes which will be effective from April first twenty three. So the options are ten nine six five four. So now uh, the correct answer is option three six. So now let's look at the explanation. In the exercise of the power conferred by Section One Thirty Nine, read with Section Twenty Nine Two Ninety Five of the Income Tax Act Nineteen Sixty One Forty Three of Nineteen Sixty One, the Central Board of Direct Taxes has notified six income tax return forms for the assessment year twenty three to twenty four. So the Central Board of Direct Taxes has also notified ITR five verification form and the. Indian Income Tax Return Acknowledgement. The IRT forms include IRT one, charge, and IRT two, IRT three, IRT four, shugam, IRT five, and IRT six. The form will come into effect from April first, twenty three. So now let's look at the next question. So the seventh question is according to the Electricity Market Report twenty three released by International Energy Agency on eighth February twenty three Asia will use half of world's electricity by dash. So the options are twenty five, twenty twenty five, twenty twenty seven, twenty twenty four, twenty twenty eight, twenty twenty six. So the correct answer is option one twenty twenty five. So now let's look at the explanation. So, according to the International Energy Agency report, Electricity Market Report, twenty twenty three, released on eighth February twenty three, Asia will use half of the world's electricity by twenty twenty five, a majority of which will be used in China, which consumes more electricity than European Union and United States and India combined. So, Africa will use only three percent of world's electricity in twenty twenty five, despite having Fifth of the world's population, China, a country of 1.4 billion people, whose share of world consumption will increase from a quarter in 2015 to a third by the middle of this decade, will account for a large portion of Asia's energy use. So now let's move on to the next question. So the eighth question is: Which bank has recently signed an MOU with? European Bank (BNP) Paribas to meet the financial needs of European enterprises operating in India and Indian companies in the European Union. So the options are HDFC Bank, Axis Bank, ICICI Bank, Yes Bank, Indusindian Bank. So the correct answer is option three, ICICI Bank. So now let's look at the explanation. So ICICI Bank has signed an MOU with the European Bank and BNP Paribas to meet the financial needs of the European enterprises operating in India and Indian companies in the European Union. So the agreement was signed by 
Anup Bakshi, who is the executive director of ICICI Bank, and the Grace Gor Marcos, who is the chief operating officer of BNP Paribas India. The MOU would create a framework for collaborating collaboration between the two banks to offer financial services to corporate customers operating along India. European corridor. So, this partnership would also enhance the support provided to Indian firms on their global journey as well as European cooperation seeking to establish their presence in India. So, now let's move on to the next question. So, the ninth question is name the company that has recently launched CoLED, India's first fully automated escrow management solution for coal lending so the options are cash free cc avenue closer pay paytm and insta mode so the correct answer is option one cash free so now let's look at the explanation so cash free payments a leading payment and application programming interface Banking solution company has launched CoLend, India's first fully automated escrow management solution for co-lending. So CoLend was developed in line with digital lending guidelines announced by Reserve Bank of India. It enables instant dispersal with automatic reconciliation and dashboard for managing various partnership and other features. It requires a manual intervention, automatically notifies the loan management system and eliminates reconciliation efforts. So now let's move on to the next question. So the 10th question is who has recently declared as the next president of Bangladesh by the election commission of Bangladesh. So the options are Zilur Rahman Mohammed. Shahabuddin Chipu and Lajuddin Ahmad, Shahabuddin Ahmad, Abdur Rahman Biswas. So, the correct answer is option 2 Muhammad Shahabuddin Chipu. So, now let's look at the explanation. So, Muhammad Shahabuddin Chipu, who is 74 years old, a former judge and a freedom fighter, has been declared the next president of Bangladesh by Bangladesh Election Commission. The ruling Aw Awami League party nominees Shahabuddin Chipu was elected unopposed as the 22nd president of Bangladesh. Shahabuddin Chipu will replace the incumbent president Mohammed Abdul. Ahmed, the longest serving president of Bangladesh, whose tenure ends in 2023 April. So now let's look at the next question. So the 11th question is which of the following points is are correct with respect to recent approval by the Competition Commission of India? CCI has approved the proposed combination involving acquisition of up to 100% shareholding in our system International Limited by BCP Asia 2, Top Code 2 Private Limited. Um, CCI also approved the consolidation of HPM business. LANXESS, AG, and DEM business of Konikilj DSM NV under the Zenti LX GMBH and JO Hold Co of Platin 2170 GMBH and LAXESS. CCI has approved acquisition of commercial. Real estate asset by Nexus Select Trust, which is the SEBI registered real estate investment trust and is backed by Blackstone. So the options are only A, only A and B, only B and C, only A and C, all A, B and C. So the correct answer is option 5, all A, B and C. So now let's look at the explanation. The Competition Commission of India has given its approval for the following proposal. So, CII, CCI has approved the proposed combination involving acquisition of up to 100% shareholding in our system, International Limited by BCP Asia to Top Code 2 PT Private Limited. CCI also approved the consolidation of high performance material business of land LA and SEXS, AG and engineering material business so 
and also CCI has approved acquisition of commercial real estate asset by Nexus Select Trust which is SEBI registered real estate investment trust and it is backed by Blackstone. So now let's look at the next question. So the 12th question is name the bank that has recently sold its entire stake of 9.95 in soft cell technology is global private limited for 9.94 crore. So the options are ICICI bank, Axis bank, HGFC bank, Yes bank, State Bank of India. So the correct answer is option 3 HGFC bank. So now let's look at the explanation. So Mumbai based HDFC Bank Limited is set to sell its entire stake of 9.95% in soft cell technology global private limited for 9.94 crores at rupees 600.36 per equity share in March 2022 and HDFC Bank sold 2.5% stake in soft cell for 1.47 crores. So soft cell a company which was founded on 6 September 2018, sells information technology products and offers software and related services. So now let's move on to the next question. So the 13th question is in February 23, Liberty Global PLC acquired a Dash stake in Vodafone Group PLC betting a share rival. So the options are 4.9, 4%, 3.9%, 3%, 3.5%. And 3 so the correct answer is option 1, 4.9%. So now let's look at the explanation. So Liberty Global PLC, which is a multinational telecommunication company, which is headquartered in London, the United Kingdom, has acquired 4.9% stake in Vodafone Group, which is a British multinational telecom company based in US and in a surprise bet on Vodafone plans to revamp its business. So Liberty Global and Vodafone shares 50-50 joint venture in Netherlands called Vodafone Zigo and in 2019 Liberty sold Vodafone its German and Eastern European business for Euro 18.4 billion and in 2022 Vodafone share has dropped around 30% which has drawn the attention of several strategic investors. So now let's move on to the next question. So the 14th question is in February 23, the government of India launched a mobile application Kana Prahari and a web app coal mine surveillance and management system to curb illegal mining. Which of the following institute or ministry has recently developed the CMS EMS in, co in coordination with the Ministry of Coal. So the options are Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Bhaskaracharya Institute for Space Application and Geoinformatics, in Ministry of Science and Technology, both 1 and 2, both 2 and 3. So the correct answer is option 4, both 1 and 2. So Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and Bhaskaracharya Institute for Space Application and Geoinformatics. So now let's look at the explanation. So the government of India has launched a mobile application under the Ministry of Coal, Kana Prahari uh, and a web app, Coal Mine Surveillance and Management System for reporting unauthorized coal mining activities so that responsible laws and order enforcing body can monitor them and take appropriate actions. So the app had received reports of 462 cases as of January 2023 and the CMS MS was developed by the Ministry of Coal in coordination with Bhaskaracharya Institute for Space Application and Geoinformatics which is located in Gandhinagar, Gujarat and the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So the CMS MS is a satellite based monitoring system which can uh, serve as a sing signal for any coal mining activities near active coal mining sites. So CMS MS developed under the Ministry of Indian program is one of the first spatially enabled surveillance system to create which is being created in India. It has hosted a national center for geoinformatics portal. So now let's look at the next question. 
So the 15th question is name the company that has recently introduced Snapdragon satellite the world's first satellite based two way capable messaging solution from premium smartphones the options are Micron Technology INC Qualcomm Technologies INC Microsoft Corporation S Crescent Limited NEC Corporation so the correct answer is option 2 Qualcomm Technologies INC so now let's look at the explanation so Qualcomm Technology INC introduced Snapdragon satellite which is the world's first satellite based way capable messaging solution for premium star smartphones at the consumer electronics show 2023 which was held in Las Vegas United States of America from 5th to 8th January 2023 and the Snapdragon satellite developed with LDM will allow the next generation premium Android smartphones and other gadgets to support messaging for emergency use in rural and offshore locations. So the Snapdragon satellite will provide global connectivity using mobile message messaging from around the world starting with device based on flagship Snapdragon 8 generation to mobile platform. So now let's look at the next question. So the 16th question is Lalita Lajmi, a renowned dash has recently passed away. So the options are writer, architect, painter, director, actor. So the correct answer is option 3, painter. So now let's look at the explanation. So Lalita Lajmi, who she passed away at the age of 90 and she is the sister of late actor Guru Dutt. And Lalita Lamji was born on 17th October 1932 in Calcutta, which was then a Bengal presidency in the British India. Now it is in West Bengal, India. So Lalita Lamji has had several exhibitions at the International Art Galleries in Paris, London and Holland. Her works are held in collections of National Gallery of Modern Art, British Museum and Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Vastu Sangrahalaya Museum Mumbai Maharashtra and Lalita Namji an unparalleled watercolor artist tells the story of modern India women in, in the decade after independence through her works. So now let's look at the next question. So the 17th question is which of the following points is incorrect with respect to the Uttar Pradesh Global Investor Summit 2023 held in February 23. So the first point is the Uttar Pradesh government signed 18,643 MOUs for investment intentions over three days UPGIS 23 with a value of 33.50 lakh crore in Lucknow. Wellspun 1 Logistic Park has signed rupees 2,000 crore packed with the Uttar Pradesh government to create warehousing and logistic park in the state. Reliance Aditya Birla Group and Tata has pledged to spend more than 1 lakh crore in UP to expand their businesses in the near future at UPGIS 2023 Lucknow emerged as UP's most favored investment destination at UPGIG 2023. The sports department of UP signed a number of MOUs at the sports focus session titled Harnessing Opportunities in Sports Sectors in Uttar Pradesh. So the correct answer is So the correct answer is option 4. So now let's look at the explanation. So Uttar Pradesh government signed 18,643 memorandum of understanding for investment intentions over 3 day Uttar Pradesh Global Investor Summit with a value of 33.50 lakh crore in Lucknow UP and the renewable investment accounted for 12.41% of total investment reaching 3.58 lakh crore and Pulse Fund 1 Logistic Park has signed 2000 crore packed with Uttar Pradesh government to create warehousing in logistic park in the state and expand its position in warehousing sector in North India. Reliance Aditya Birla Group and the Tata, three of India's largest conglomerates pledged to spend more than 1 lakh crore in UP to expand their business in the near future. So Nordia Emoj has UP's most favored investment destination. The sports department of Uttar Pradesh signed a number of memorandum of understanding at the sports focus session titled Harnessing Opportunities in Sports Sector in Uttar Pradesh during the 
uh, Uttar Pradesh Global Investor Summit. So now let's move on to the next question. So the 18th question is, which of the following points is are correct with respect to Mizoram state government budget for 23-24 presented in February 23? So the options are Chief Minister and Finance Minister of Mizoram, Z uh, Zoram Tang presented the annual budget for financial year 23-24 with a total outlay of 30,100.10 crores. He also presented the supplementary demand for grant for 22 to 23 financial um, year fina fiscal amounting to 3265.69 crore and the third point is with a special focus on socio economic development policy rupees 595 crore was allocated to it for 23 to 24 fiscals the options are only a only a and b only b and c only a and c all a b and c so the correct answer is option 3, only B and C. So now let's look at the explanation. So Zoram Tang, who is the Chief Minister of Mizoram, also holds the portfolio of uh, Finance Minister, presented Mizoram's annual budget for financial year 23 to 24 with an outlay of 14,209. 0.95 crores and increase of 201.80 crore from 22 to 23 budget. He also presented the supplementary demand grant for 23, uh, 22 to 23 fiscal amounting to 3265.69 crore. He stated that 23 to 24 budget is zero deficit and non surplus budget as the estimate total receipts are exactly equal to the estimated total expenditure no new taxes have been imposed nor was a proposal to hike the existing rates in 23 to 24 budget with a special focus on socio-economic development policy 595 crore was allocated to it for 23 to 24 fiscal out of this 300 crore will be allocated under family oriented SEDP for 23 to 24 so under SEDP, the government will distribute monetary assistance of 50,000 and 60,000 uh, families during the current physical. So that's it. We are done with today's question. So I'll meet you tomorrow. Till then, eat well, sleep well, study well. Bye-bye.